Hey guys, what's up? Dr. W here. And today we're going to do something a little different. It's going to be a music review ranking. I know this is normally a gaming channel, but Eminem's new album came out last week. I've been really enjoying it, and I thought it's been a week. I've had time to listen to it. So I thought we'd sit down, do something that I've done on this channel, which is rank things, and we'll rank his albums. Uh, just the solo projects from Slim Shady LP to Music To Be Motored By. And we're just going to rank them 1 through 10 from worst to best. And how we're going to do this is, if you can hear in the background, you hear all my notes going around, is I either rank each song on the album a 0, a 1, or a 2. If it's a 0, that means it is not in my Eminem playlist. If it is a 1, it means I have included it in my Eminem playlist that I listen to. But I'd probably skip it half the times. And if it's a 2, it's in the playlist, and I'll probably listen to it more times than not when it comes up in the playlist. Uh, I, ranked, I gave a score to every song on an album, and then I got a percentage out of, like, dividing the total points, you know, out of the possible points and all that, you know, math. And that's how we're going to do this, and then I'll rank them by percentage scores. So, without further ado, let's hop on into it with number 10, his worst album which I think anybody is going to agree, is Revival. Revival came out in 2017, and it honestly feels like Eminem has still been trying to prove that he is better than that, and I think he's done that uh, by now, Kamikaze Music to be motored by. But when Revival came out, I don't know, I had some doubts once I heard the album, and it was kind of upsetting as it grew on me more and more of that. I just really didn't enjoy it. So we're just going to go down all the tracks, not counting the uh, intros, and I'll tell you what I scored them. So, the first track on the album is Walk on Water. Um, I enjoy inspirational Eminem songs, and I thought this was a good one. It felt meaningful. I like Beyonce. I gave it a 2. Out of 2, just in case you guys forgot how we're going to rank this. So 2 is the best you can get. And Zeus the Wars. Uh, next up on the album is Believe, which I still enjoy. I listen to it. Uh, it's probably the best non-sentimental song on the album. Uh, and I also gave it a two. And then from there down, like half the album is when it gets really sketchy and concerning for me. Next was Claw Septic, the uh, original version with just fresher. And I gave that a 1. I'd listen to it if it pops up on the playlist sometimes. It's on my playlist. It's not the worst song on the album, not by far. But it's just, it's awkward. Especially compared to the remix with 2 Chains. The next song is Untouchable. I enjoyed it more when it came out as a single, I think. Than when it was on the album. Because I was just excited to have new Eminem. Because this was the first solo Eminem album in 4 years since Marshmallow's LP2. But it's just, it's rough getting through those first two verses to get to the third verse, which is a lot better. But it's, it's hard to listen to. But I, I gave it a one because it is on the playlist, and I listen to it sometimes. The next song is River with Ed Sheeran. I mean, it's not the best Eminem Ed Sheeran song, which is crazy that there's more than one of them. Um, but it's decent. Um, it has a lot of, like, love the way you lie type vibes, and... I mean, though that song's way better than River. But I gave it a 1. It's on the playlist. I listen to it sometimes. Next up is Remind Me. This one might be con uh, more controversial than any of my other opinions on songs so far. Because it's one of those rock and roll songs. Um, it's decent. The Rick Rubin sound is really not good for EM. But I enjoy Remind Me sometimes, you know. I like rock and roll. I'm a white boy. Sometimes get tall, as you know. It's cool to listen to, but it's not a great hip-hop song. But I gave it a 1. Next up, uh, is really when the album started going downhill for me, is Like Home. Uh, I think this has Alicia Keys on it. <laughs> um, yeah, like that pause right there. That's what it was like listening to it, I feel. It's just really tough to hear it start with this song. And then for a while, the album just goes down completely to shit. This song is boring, uninterested. I don't want to hear Eminem on too many songs like this. And then the next one's Bad Husband. I think it has a 
X Ambassadors feature on it. It's um, also awful. It's another one of those Eminem songs where he's talking about his relationship. And he does that well sometimes in songs on Kamikaze and Midget to be murdered by. But Bad Husband is not one at the end. So just like I gave Like Home a zero, I'm going to give Bad Husband also a zero. Followed up with Tragic Endings with Skylar Grey. Uh, which I also gave a zero to. Another boring relationship track. Not too much to say about this one. Then we have Framed. Which is a nice, you know, shining light in this middle of the album. Uh, you know, it's Eminem kind of relapse era, but without like the shitty accents. Though I feel like the chorus is a little cringy on this one. Um, I gave it a two. It's a decent listen. Though, you know, Eminem's courses are a bit shaky sometimes. Next is Nowhere Fast, which also has a feature on it, I feel. And it's also a shitty Eminem song. Uh, kind of sentimental, just too... I don't know. It doesn't feel like the type of Eminem song I'd want to listen to. So I give that a zero. Then Heat, which... As far as the second worst song on the album, I gave it a zero. It's one of those Rick Rubin rock and roll songs that is just garbage. <laughs> Next is Offended. I'm iffy on this one. Uh, it's it's a good, it's a fine song. I'm not I don't know if good, but it's a fine song. The chorus is awful. The beat is weird. Uh, Eminem saying some crazy things, which I enjoy. I gave it a one. Because, you know, I'd listen to it every now and then. It's on the playlist. Next up is the worst song on the album, though. Which is Need Me with Pink. And I'm pretty sure it's just a singing song. Though I don't know if I've ever listened to this song all the way through to hear if there's a rap on it. But it is awful. It's the worst song on this album. I can't, I don't give lower than zeros. So I gave it a zero. Next is In Your Head with the zombie cranberry feature. Or, um, it's not a feature, it's a sample it's decent. Uh, it's on the playlist. I gave it a one. I don't know. That's about all I can say about it. It's, it's like a middle of the road song. It's not the worst song I've heard. And then the best two songs on the album, which are Castle and A Rose. I'm going to talk about these together because they kind of feed into each other. And these are both sentimental. They mean a lot to me, you know. Um, the storytelling in at its best, they feed into each other. And sadly, those are the only two, like, great songs on the album were these last two. And I gave both of them uh, twos. Which means there's 17 songs. That means there's 34 possible points. And out of 34 possible points, Revival got 16, giving it a 47. So that's going to go right there at the bottom. Next up is... Let's see if I can get my... Yes. Now, before I get into this one, I just want to say there's a huge gap between Revival at 10 and this album at number 9. Because I feel like this album, though, is probably still considered Eminem's second worst album. Um, that might be controversial, but I don't know if it's too controversial. I feel like it's still good. It's It has a lot of good tracks on it, which I feel bring it up some, where Revival really doesn't have many. And at number 9 is Encore. Uh, I think it came out in 2004. And this is the first Eminem album I heard. Uh, I was eight when I heard it uh, in 2004 when it came out. And this is kind of what turned me on to hip hop. Though some of, these sound, some of these songs back then I thought were weird. And I still think are weird today. And you'll probably see that in the uh, reflection in the scoring. So the first song on this album is Evil Deeds. It's weird. Um, I don't, the beat's kind of weird. Eminem's delivery's kind of weird. It just it doesn't click with me as much as some of the other songs of this album do. So I gave it a one. But it's definitely a decent Eminem song. Next up is Never Enough with 50 Cent and Nate Dogg. This song is awesome. It's, you know, classic old school Eminem. It gets a two. I don't know if there's much else to say about that one. It's a good banger. Next is Yellow Brick Road. 
Uh, it's a storytelling track. It talks about uh, the Foolish Pride, a track that he did back in 88 or 89. And it's a good storytelling track. It's Eminem at its best, probably, when he's telling these tales and recounting his youth. And in 04, you know, that's kind of like not something that's been dragged out too much, I think. And then Toy Soldiers, which is one of Eminem's best songs ever, I think. Has a great sample. Uh, he's talking about some like really deep shit on here. I gave it a two. Uh, I probably rarely skip this song when it comes up on the playlist. Next up is Mosh. Um, I love Mosh. Uh, it's probably also one of my top ten favorite Eminem songs. It's just so angry, and I agree with a lot of what he's saying in this one. And. I don't know. Ma this album does have a bunch of nostalgia for me because it reminds me of my, of my childhood. And Mosh is one of those songs that when I hear, I think about being like, you know, a preteen, a teen. You know, it's, it has that memory for me. And it's a great song, so it gets a two. Next is Puke. Uh, this might be a controversial opinion for most people, but I think Puke is a great song too. Uh, I gave it a two as well. It's just, it's catchy, you know? It's one of those relationship songs, but, like, in 4 M was still, like, in, in this relationship. And, you know, had motivations and stuff to talk about it. Things were still new and happening within it. Not like today, when it's just all looking back. In 4 there was still, like, he was in the trenches of this relationship. So, Puke has some merit behind it as well, and it's also a catchy song. And then, one of Eminem's worst songs, uh, the only song to get a zero on, in, a, in the Encore album, is my first single. I cannot remember the last time I've listened to my first single by Eminem. It's, it's just, it's such a stupid song, which leads us into... Just the next couple songs are dumb as well. Uh, we got Rain Man, which I think out of the stupid songs on this album is the best one. Uh, it's still Eminem goofing off, being zany, not saying anything at all, really. I gave it a one. It's fun to listen to every now and then. Next is Big Weenie. Also, the same as Rain Man, a little worse, not saying anything, being zany. It's just a stupid fucking song. I, uh, but I still gave it a warm because sometimes, you know, it's fun to hear that. Um, I'm not reviewing the... Um, what's it called? Greatest Hits album. But Fat is on that album. It's the only album that song's on. And I'd probably give Fat a one, If not a two, just because even though it's a dumb song, it's still like fun to listen to. So that's like my thought process here. So after Big Weenie, it's Just Lose It, which I gave a 1 to, though it might deserve a 2, because, I mean, it is it is a funny song, though it's like Big Weenie and Rain Man, where it's just fucking stupid to listen to. He's not really saying anything. The chorus is kind of weird, so I gave that one a 1. Next is Ass Like That. Uh, I gave a 2 to. Um, I don't know. Maybe reminiscing a bit, listening to it when I was younger. But I think it's a good Eminem song. His wordplay is good. I think the uh, chorus is funny, not dumb, just funny. So that's what that is going for. Next is Spend Some Time. It's got Obi Trice. Uh, I think it has... Yeah, I know it has 50 Cent Obi Trice and it might have Lloyd Banks on it as well. I've really, I always enjoyed Eminem's verse on Spend Some Time. I thought the chorus was good. It was another one of those relationship songs. But like I said with Puke, it's like when he was in the middle of the relationship. So it has some merit. And then another one of my top 10 favorite Eminem songs is Mockingbird, which is the next on the album. Uh, this song is just so heartfelt. And I always like like the low effort Eminem rhyming on this song particularly. I don't know if I like that style outside of it. But it always seemed to fit, kind of, in a way. And I always have enjoyed Mockingbird, so I gave it a 2. 
And then next we have Crazy in Love with a sample from the rock band Heart. And I gave it a 1 out of 2 because it's on the playlist. And I listen to it sometimes, but I feel like this one's maybe... This is the one too many love songs on the album, you know what I'm saying? Like, you've had like three or four by now, and you know, you need to cut some of these out. And that would be crazy in love for me. Uh, next up is One Shot, Two Shot, featuring D12. That might be why it gets a two instead of a one. Because, you know, it, it's cool to hear M rhyming with D12, especially since, you know, he's like, this is... The time when he's with D12. So. I don't know. It's a cool track to listen to. I like it a lot. It's got a good sound going for it. Uh, next is Encore with 50 Cent and Dr. Dre. Uh, that's just a powerful combo in and of itself. With those three. So that might be why I threw it on here. Uh, two. Instead of a one. So there's that. Next I have the three bonus tracks. Uh, if there are bonus tracks available. On an album. I'm going to put it there. So that's why I have We As Americans next. I've always liked We As Americans. Um, it seems a little less quality than some of the better songs on this album. But I think it's still deserving of the two I gave it. Next is Love You More. Which if Crazy In Love was the one too many love songs. Love You More is the uh, two too many love songs on the track on the album, but it's a decent song, so I gave it a 1 instead of a 0. And finally, Ricky Ticky Talk, which I gave a 2. Um, I think it's a decent Eminem just going in. I don't know if it's a freestyle, but you know, there's no courses. He's just going in rhyming, and Eminem really eats that stuff up. So, there are 38 possible points in Encore. I gave 30 points to, which means there are 79. It gets a 79, so that puts it at number 9. A whole 32 points ahead of Revival. So, after that one, we are going to number 8. Let me get my notes straightened out here. Number 8, which is Marshall Mathers LP 2. I try to put a pause in there to get you. Oh my god, he's gonna put the first one. No, uh, the second one came out in 2013, and there I think it might be the longest album Eminem has released. Let's see here. I do believe it is the longest of all his albums. Me song song revival. Yeah, it is by far his longest album. So, let's jump on into it then. First song, Bad Guy, a uh, sequel to Stan. I don't know, Eminem really put some time, you know, working on his pin game, telling this story for a second time. I think it works well to tie into the first Marshall Mathers album. It's got the same vibe in a way, uh, which is probably a problem a lot of people have with this album is that it really doesn't vibe with the first Marshall Mathers really that much, but Bad Guy definitely ties it back. The next song is Rhyme or Reason, which I get uh, is a little a little dumb in places, but I think Eminem does a good job of reining that in some to give us just a well rhyming, you know, track that's catchy. I like the sample, Time of the Season. I forget who sings that song though, but it all works together, I think. So I gave that one a 2 as well. Next up is So Much Better, which is a lot like Rhyme or Reason to me, but just a little dumber. And I gave it a 1 instead of a 2. And I think really, a part in that song that exemplifies why it's dumb in the Rhyme or Reason is that fucking Smurf line he says. I forget what it even is, but it is, it is dumb. Uh, next song is Survival. Which is the theme song to Call of Duty Ghost. And that game sucks ass. And this song just seems like there's not much meaning in it to him. He just seems to be doing it to do it. And I think that reflects a lot on the song. 
Uh, that's not like, it's nothing great. So it gets a one. I'd listen to it every now and then, but it's it's probably close to even getting a zero, but I gave it a one. Next up is Legacy. I really like Legacy. I think it's one of the better songs on this album. Uh, it's meaningful. It's kind of retrospective, which M does a lot, and some people might be like, you you, you know, he does it too much, which I get. But Legacy is a good example of him doing it right. And it's catchy, you know, kind of repeats itself, but like in different ways. And I enjoy that in songs. Next up is Asshole featuring Skylar Grey. I think as a dumb chorus, I think M's rhymes aren't that great. I'd listen to it every now and then, but it's it's going to get a one for me. Next song would be Berserk, which I think... I'm going to give it a lot of credit for being the first of these Rock and Roll Rick Rubin songs. And I think a lot of people give it a lot of credit because it's one of these like Rock and Roll Rick Rubin songs. It's the first one. Um, and it it went to number three on the Billboard chart. So like people were like vibing with this one probably because, you know, it was the first single off of Eminem's new album in three years. I gave it a two. I could see a one for it. But I mean, it's enjoyable. It's one of the most enjoyable of those songs, too. Um, so, that's that. Next would be Rap God. Uh, definitely gets a two from me. It's really lyrical, though like Berserk, it does seem like a sign of some bad things that are coming. Because Eminem goes too fast on some songs and ruins them. Uh, or makes them lesser versions of what they could be. Rap God is a good place to show that off at. But I think the popularity of that song may be hurt him in the long run. But we can't, like, hold those scenes against Rap God. So it still gets a 2. Next up would be Brainless. I like Brainless. I think it's a catchy song. Eminem's doing some good rhyming on it. And that's about what most of this album is. You know, if there's good rhyming on it and if it's not a dumb fucking song, uh, it's going to get a 2 for me, honestly. And that's why I gave Brainless a 2. Next up is... The worst song by a fucking mile on this album. This song is Stronger Than I Was. It is a Eminem singing song. A Eminem relationship song. It's boring. I probably listened to it once all the way through when the album came out. And I've never listened to it again. I am not going to listen to it again. It can burn in hell. It gets a zero. Next up is The Monster with Rihanna. I like the song. I mean, I could see maybe people not liking it, but I like the Eminem Rihanna mix. I think if he's going to do the poppy, you know, try to go for a number one single, he probably needs to get her back. Because him, Beyonce, and him, and Ed Sheeran don't, they don't click like him and Rihanna do, and that's weird. I wonder why that is, but him and Rihanna seem to click. I like the monster. I like Love the Way You Lie. So, I'm doing that, giving that one a two. Next song on the album is So Far. I could see someone giving this a zero. I gave it a one. It's on the playlist. I'd listen to it maybe a quarter of the times it comes up. It is dumb. It is a rock and roll song. But I think M does a good job of rapping better on this than he does on some of the rock and roll songs on Revival. Um, I don't know. It can, it's, it's kind of fun to listen to every now and then. It's not spectacular. Next up would be Love Games featuring Kendrick Lamar. I really wish M would get Kendrick on a feature or do a feature on a Kendrick song again. They work so well together. This song is funny. It's got great performances. Kendrick gives one of the best performances of his life on this song. I think. And M does two good verses. It's a relationship song but kind of not. You know, it's Eminem being like funny about it. It's not him like sulking. Those are the bad relationship songs. So he does a great performance. Makes Kendrick give a great performance. The hook is catchy. Love Games gives it two. Next up is Headlights. I don't know how I feel about this song. It's a good song. It's on the playlist. But I probably skip it almost every time it comes up. Because I can't relate to it really. Um, I haven't um, talked to my mom in years. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that happened when I was a kid. And I don't know, that's probably why I don't like the song. You know, I can't see me rapping a song about forgiving her 
as of yet. So it's going to get a one because I realize it's it's a decent song. It's not one I'm going to like listen to or even like rap along to. But it's on the playlist just because I understand it's a good song. Uh, next up is Evil Twin. This is a good, this is a great song. Uh, Eminem really shows off, you know, he still got it a little bit. Though I think the verse with sh when he's like, you know, bringing Shady out, he says, is a bit lackluster. But I give it a two. It has a bunch of neat things to it, and it's him rapping at his best. Next up is Baby. If you have the extended cut, which I do of all the albums. That's what I'm reviewing. Uh, Baby is the next song on the album. And it's Eminem at his best rapping. The chorus is a little it's a little dumb, you know, with the whole dirty dancing, don't put baby in a corner thing. But Baby is Eminem at his peak rapping, and it gets a two out of ten for me. A, a two out of two for me for that. Next up is Desperation. Uh, it's a weaker song. It's on the playlist. I'll just do it every now and then. Uh, I think the chorus is probably what brings it down a little bit. I think the chorus goes on a little too long for my taste. That's just me, so I'm going to give it a 1. Next up is Groundhog Day. This is another one where Eminem is rapping his ass off. It tells an interesting story, uh, which we've heard before, but it, you know, it tells it in an interesting way. The beat in the rhyme scheme, I really appreciate about this song. It's unique. So I'm going to give it a 2. Next up is Beautiful Pain with Sia. I don't know how I feel about the Eminem-Sia connection. It's one of those weaker ones, I think. But Beautiful Pain is inspirational. I like inspirational Eminem songs. He's got some good rhyming and wordplay. is a great singer. So for that, it gets a 2 for me. The last song on the album is Wicked Ray, Wicked Ways. Uh, I think it has X Ambassadors on it. Eminem has a bunch of good double entendres and wordplay in this album. Uh, in this song. It's a very catchy song. I like the, the hook is real nice. The beat's good. You know, you can tell, like, this isn't one of those shitty songs where Rick Rubin put, like, the dumbass rock and roll guitars and shit in it. So for that, I'm going to give it a 2. Though, I, I don't like the skit. I skipped the whole skit at the end of the song. But the song itself, I'm going to give it a 2, too. So, out of, the, out of all the songs, there's 40 possible points. Marshmallow's Airport 2 gets 32 of them, giving it an 80. So just to recap, because I'm going to make this a couple parts, because we've been talking for 30 minutes and I've only gotten through 3 of 10 albums. At number 10, there's Revival with 47 points, clearly the worst album. Encore with 79 points, and Marshall Mathers LP2 with 80 points. Now, I would say Revival's a bad album, but Encore and Marshall Mathers LP2, I would uh, I'd say are good albums. They're not great, but, you know, there's more songs on here. There are twos and ones, or zeros, so I'll call them good. So... Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. If you want more um, ranking, leave in the comments what you want me to rank. Music, movies, games, whatever. If you want more musical content, like me reviewing albums and stuff. I mean, I listen to a lot more than just Eminem or rap. Uh, be sure to like and comment that so I know what you all want. Um, be sure to check out the second part of this video. It'll be posted soon. I'll probably work on that later today, maybe tomorrow. It'll be within the week before. It'll be posted sometime in the next week is what I'm trying to say. Um, Lil Wayne just dropped an album called Funeral today. So if these Eminem videos do well, I'll probably do a Lil Wayne review ranking his albums because I'm also a huge Lil Wayne fan. And that's about it, guys. So, like I said, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you all so much for watching. Peace.